Welcome to the forced vortex experiment. A vortex is the revolving motion of fluid around an axis which possesses circular streamlines. There are two types of vortices, a free vortex and a forced vortex. They are similar in the sense that both revolve about an axis, but the characteristics of each are quite different. The free vortex does not have the added external force. Instead, it naturally forms as a result of the vertical movement of liquid from a rather stagnant reservoir to a faster moving region. During this process, a funnel forms like when draining a bathtub. On the other hand, a force vortex requires an external force to impose the revolving flow path. There does not need to be a vertical movement of liquid. Simply, force is applied to the liquid, often through a rotating vane or impeller, which causes the fluid within the reservoir to form a vortex. One characteristic of both vortices is tangential velocity. For a free vortex, the tangential velocity increases towards the center because the fluid is approaching the exit point, whereas for a forced vortex, the velocity decreases towards the center because the force is applied across the entire radius. So, the angular velocity is constant. This means that the tangential velocity is proportional to the radius. In other words, when two people are running in a circle beside one another, the person on the outside has to run faster in order to keep up. This is the same principle within a forced vortex. The focus of this experiment is only on forced vortices, but both types needed a basic explanation in order to understand the differences. Now we can further visualize forced vortices within the laboratory. This here is the impeller vortex apparatus, which consists of a large reservoir on the bottom, a pump to move the water in the clockwise direction, a selector valve, a transparent vessel, inlet and outlet ports, an impeller, measuring devices, an overflow valve, and lastly hoses to connect all the components in a closed loop. To begin the experiment, first fill the bottom reservoir to 10 centimeters below the top. Turning on the pump without any water in the reservoir will result in damage to the pump. Insert the plug possessing the short shaft in the bottom of the vessel. Then slide the impeller with the flat side facing downwards on the shaft. Now the pump can be plugged into the power supply. Open the sliding valve between the measuring basin and the reservoir. Open the overflow valve all the way and close the gate valve. Also keep the selector valve closed by pointing it in the vertical upright position. As a side note, turning the selector valve counterclockwise directs the flow tangentially into the transparent vessel, but turning the valve clockwise directs the flow radially into the vessel. Now turn on the power switch and turn on the pump. Open the gate valve and slowly start to turn the selector valve in the clockwise direction, approximately an eighth of a turn so that the flow gently enters in the radial direction to fill the vessel. Turning the valve a quarter turn such that it is horizontal opens the valve completely. Filling the vessel first with the flow directed radially reduces the quantity of spray on the user. Once the water level fills about three quarters of the vessel, rotate the selector valve counterclockwise past the vertical position until the valve is approximately an eighth of a turn to the left of the center. For the remainder of the experiment, the valve will remain in this position, allowing the flow to enter tangentially. The purpose of this is so that the flow can drive the impeller since the impeller is not connected to a motor and can spin freely on the shaft. Now adjust the selector valve and the outlet valve simultaneously so that the water level remains constant in the vessel. Wait approximately 5 minutes to ensure the shape of the vortex has stabilized. Now, 
Position the tip of the large metal rod so it is just touching the water surface. Lock the rod in this position with the nut. Then, push the five other smaller rods down so that the tips are touching the water surface as well. Once it is confirmed that the shape of the vortex has not changed a large amount, take the height readings. This is done by placing a ruler on the top edge of the mount and measuring to the top of each rod since they are all the same length. After the readings are taken, pull all six rods back to the top so their points are hidden in the mount. Now, the velocity of the water must be recorded. The impeller was created with one red vein and the others being a different color so that when the vein is rotating in water, it can be seen easily. Use a stopwatch and measure the time it takes for 10 revolutions of the impeller using the red vein as the marker. The velocity achieved with this method is the angular velocity. Repeat this process three times to generate an average angular velocity. This completes the experiment for one velocity. Now it needs to be repeated for a minimum of two other velocities. To do this, rotate the selector valve slightly towards the closed position and partially close the overflow valve. Adjust both simultaneously if needed to maintain a constant water height. Wait for the vortex shape to stabilize and take the height and velocity measurements as done before. Now, to turn off the apparatus, rotate the selector valve to the closed vertical position. Close the gate valve, open the overflow valve completely, turn off the pump, and turn off the switch. Then remove the impeller, and now the plug in order to allow the vessel to drain. Lastly, unplug the apparatus from the power source. This completes the forced vortex experiment. Thank you for watching.